A grieving father stands where his son was shot outside school and calls for change. Denver taxpayers have paid for more than 5,000 tickets out of town to talk to migrants about their often winding journeys. Conservative parents get three books banned and target hundreds of others. Not a great day to breathe air unless you have to. And she spent her career honoring others. Now it's her turn. I am so used to being backstage and being behind the curtain. It's showtime on Next. Luis Garcia's father stood outside East High, where Luis was fatally shot, and said today that his son would be alive if East had the kind of security it does these days. Santos Garcia returned to the school for the first time since the shooting in February. He talked with a group of parents who meet out there regularly to talk about school safety. The Garcias have put Denver Public Schools on notice that they may sue over the decision to remove school resource officers in 2020. Those armed officers have been brought back temporarily since Luis Garcia's shooting death and another shooting at East that injured two administrators. You all ver la patrulla que pusieron enfrente de la escuela. When I saw the patrol that they put in front of the school, creo que a lo mejor mi hijo estuviera aquí con nosotros todavía. I think maybe my son will be still with here with us today. Si las cosas hubiesen cambiado antes, if things were different before, cabría la posibilidad. Maybe there was that possibility. The Garcia's attorney says they have not heard back from the district about any sort of potential mediation of their legal claim. Since the shootings at East, DPS Superintendent Alex Marrero has released a proposed safety plan for next school year. Sunday is the last day to give input on the first draft. You can find it on the DPS website. The current proposal would allow individual middle and high schools to decide if they want armed police officers in schools and suggested using detection systems to screen for weapons. This plan would not make changes to the discipline matrix, which allows students charged with violent crimes, including attempted murder, to come back to class. Second draft of that safety plan will be released for more feedback on May 26. We expect the final plan by the end of next month. Wasn't fog we were seeing in Denver today. It's smoke. Now, it's Canadian smoke, so it's very polite, like Surrey to intrude, Colorado. Take a look at Denver right now. Or honestly, don't, because you can't. Uh, you can't that much. The National Weather Service says this is going to be the worst of the smoke for the weekend. Gradual improvement both Saturday and Sunday. The EPA currently lists air quality in Denver as unhealthy, thank you guys, and predicts that it's going to stay that way through at least tomorrow. They recommend spending limited time outside, especially kids, older folks, and anybody with breathing issues. Uh, Danielle, there are some days that you can't see it, and then it just kind of settles into your chest. Uh, Lungs. Today, man, it was just, it was, it was wild. It, it's rare to see it this dense without, like, the orange tint to the sky, you know, because exactly. it was just, yeah. I mean, all the smoke, too, traveling so far all the way from Canada, like you said. The worst of it tonight into early tomorrow morning, and then we will see some reprieve, but smoky, soupy, dirty, just gross out there. Hopefully you have some Friday evening plans inside. Like you mentioned, air quality will remain unhealthy through at least 4 o'clock tomorrow. Visibility, no doubt. Extremely poor, and all of this is because of those fine, smoky particulates kind of getting into our lungs. The air quality alert, not just for the urban corridor, but this stretches all the way across the eastern side of the state, too. That smoke pushing in from the north, zipping down to the south. Here we are about 1130 lunchtime tomorrow. You can just kind of see by the coloring contours this really impacting eastern Colorado. You want to get out of the smoke, head west, head up to the high country. It will be a bit better out there. And then early on Sunday morning, of course, Colfax Marathon, the smoke should be a bit better, but you still want to think about that. I'll show you the extended forecast, my seven day coming up in a few more minutes. Thank you, Danielle. Library shelves in the school district down in Colorado Springs might start looking a little sparse as conservative parents have a list of hundreds of books that they want banned. Academy School District 20 Superintendent Tom Gregory approved the removal of three books from the schools last month. Parents and conservative activists said the sexual content in the books met, met the legal definition of obscenity. In emails released by the district, the superintendent told schools, you know, they could just go ahead and pull the books, skip the formal appeals process, told at least one principal, yeah, I'll save time. District spokesperson told us yesterday one school has pulled the books, four others will pull them, but go through the typical review process. But conservatives in that community are not finished. You know, we don't seek to ban books. We, we don't seek to go to the publisher and say, stop publishing this book. Um, it's just that at certain times there are books that are in front of children that 
the parents really, at a minimum, have the right to know that their children have access to that book. The woman you heard from there is the chair of Moms for Liberty, El Paso County. District says so far they have received complaints only about those three specific books. But an advocacy group called Take Back D20 has a list of hundreds of books that they say include, quote unquote, debased topics. What are we talking about? Racism, sexism, whiteness, and LGBTQ issues. District spokesperson says if they get more book ban requests next year, they'll all go through the formal review. District said those first three were allowed to be removed quickly without the due process because it's close to the end of the school year. The Denver Republican Party is endorsing Kelly Bruff for mayor. Republicans make up a bit less than 10 percent of registered voters in the city. The mayor's race, of course, is nonpartisan. Both Bruff and Mike Johnson are registered Democrats. But the Republican endorsement of Bruff is really not a surprise. For years, she led the Denver Metro Chamber of Commerce, which is one of the most powerful conservative lobbying forces in Colorado. The lone registered Republican who was in the 16-way race for Denver Mayor Andy Rougeau, he finished in fourth place, 11.5 percent of the vote. Rougeau told me today he will not be endorsing Bruff or Johnston. The majority of migrants coming to Denver don't want to stay. Those who do want to be in Colorado long term, they're helped by some dedicated nonprofits. We'll talk about that in a minute. Some of those just passing through buy their own bus tickets to go elsewhere. City of Denver has bought another 5,300 bus tickets since December. Our Angelie McCall talked to migrants about where they have been and where they're going. No, no tenía otra opción porque sin dinero dije. The people arriving here have spent months surviving the journey. Sin dinero no podemos hacer nada para poder pagar un hotel o un cuarto para poder pasar la noche. Tuve que pasarla allá afuera aguantando frío y todo. Gustavo made it here from Texas. Pues y gracias a Dios ya estamos aquí ya. Alone and separated from his wife and family. Pues porque ahorita pues estoy por la situación de que Voy en busca de mi familia más que todo. He borrowed a phone once he arrived, only to learn they're in Dallas. Y entonces todavía me hace falta esperar para poder continuar mi viaje y poder estar junto con ellos ya nuevamente. Now he'll have to pay for another bus ticket back to Texas. Dos días de cansancio, hambre, pero bueno, ya estamos aquí, ya hay que... Johandres Daniel came with his family. De ciudad fue Broadwing, San Antonio, Dala, Dala, Tulsa, Tulsa, Oklahoma, Oklahoma, Amarillo, Amarillo, Denver, Colorado. Two days on a bus to get to Denver. Necesita un mente muy fuerte, ¿no? Sí, hay que tener mucha mente, hay que tener la mente demasiado fuerte, porque si eres mente débil, no creo que llegues a Estados Unidos. He's heading to the city's welcome center, hoping to make Denver home. Sí, es muy largo. Ronnie bought a ticket to New York. Un ticket, como se llama aquí en Estados Unidos, ¿no? Que es un boleto para viajar a Nueva York. Pero tengo que hacer un tour para llegar a Nueva York. The bus ride will take three days. Una, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, cinco ciudades para llegar a Nueva York. He'll go to Minnesota, then backtrack to Montana before Chicago, Cleveland, and finally, New York. Ay, con dolor de cabeza y pensar todos lados, ¿cómo voy a pagar? His mom will meet him on his arrival. Una emoción porque tiene años que no la veo. Se siente bonito haber llegado a verla otra vez. Sí. Ronnie, Johandres, and Gustavo will keep surviving. After all, they have family here and a new place to call home. Me siento muy orgulloso y muy feliz, la verdad, porque ya sé que voy a estar muy pronto con ellos ya y darles un abrazo, pues más que todo, porque créame que veníamos juntos y separarlo fue muy difícil para mí, pues la verdad. Pero ya gracias a Dios, ya creo que ya mañana por la tarde ya estaremos juntos nuevamente. Ronnie and Gustavo are all going to places where they have family. That's something that we've heard from a lot of people who are newly arriving here, that they're going to places where they know someone, whereas the people we met back in January, for instance, really didn't have a network here. They were the first in their circle to come to the United States, so it certainly seems like people coming now are looking to find those who were here ahead of them in the journey in the past few months or so. That certainly makes sense. You know, Angeline, uh, it strikes me that 
a lot of this is pretty inefficient, the way that people are kind of popping here and there all around the country. And that I know Denver's scrambling. All the border towns have long been scrambling. Other cities are scrambling about how to help people most efficiently. And for the least cost, it sure would be great if we get a little bit more coordination so that the folks coming to Denver are the ones who want to come to Denver as opposed to just, well, I could get to Denver and now someplace else. Yeah, certainly. I think that shows sort of the uh, disorganization or chaos that we've seen uh, on all sides of this. You know, Gustavo, for instance, he came all the way up to Denver only to find out that his family is actually in Dallas. So that doesn't really help him to come up here. Um, but when it comes to this, people are really making spur of the moment decisions. And the city is also making spur of the moment decisions. We've seen that with Denver. We've seen that with other cities as well. And so they're just trying the best they can. And even with bus tickets, you know, bus tickets are they're difficult to get right now because everything's booked out and so oh, some yeah and so some of them uh, for instance they're taking two or three days four days to just get to their final destination because they can't find bus tickets that get them there efficiently either hmm. uh, your reporting is just I don't know it's helped us really understand what's going on and how individual it is person by person people trying to make the best choice for them and their families up against all kinds of different systems and processes Angeline thank you very much so the nonprofits that you have seen so often in Angeline's reporting and others, the people on the ground who are helping the migrants who want to stay here in Colorado with meals and hotel rooms, nonprofits like Vive Wellness, they are primarily funded these days through what's called the Newcomers Fund. That's the Rose Community Foundation's project to collect donations safely and securely and then get them out quickly to the nonprofits doing the best work. Since Wednesday, you have raised $35,000 for the Newcomers Fund through this week's Word of Thanks microgiving campaign. Scan the QR code on your screen or text the word thanks to 303-871-1491 to join me and a bunch of other Coloradans in donating to the Newcomers Fund. I get it. I understand some folks are going to decide not to give to help the migrants. Understand that. Respect that. Personally, I tend to think that helping somebody who is at your doorstep and is in need is not necessarily a political statement. And we also know that these local nonprofits, often just a couple of folks and volunteers, they're not setting immigration policy. They're dealing with the real-time impacts when families show up here in our town. They're helping the folks who come to our community find the necessities, like food and shelter. It's time to go out when I'm still feeling I'm at the top of my game. An emotional finale for a stage manager who has spent years supporting Denver's theater community from the wings. And it started with one kind note, then another, and another. That's next. So we traded in the torrential downpours for smoke. Yuck, it does look like we are going to see some improvements by tomorrow afternoon and evening. Tonight, the shower activity pretty much confined to the high country areas. A little bit of light snowfall across those higher peaks. The rainfall and the snow stays up in the mountains until late tonight, about 11 o'clock. Things begin to wind down. We'll be waking up with a few clouds and, of course, that smoke early tomorrow morning. This is 8 a.m. Now, by the afternoon, here we go. We'll be tracking a couple of isolated storms rumbling across the urban corridor. Nothing severe, but you might have to pop open the umbrella really briefly. Again, still dealing with that smoke tomorrow and the showers starting to pour in, not just in the mountains, but here in the metro. Upper 60s into the 70s on deck for us. So yes, a little warmer than where we have in the past couple of days. Right now looks like Sunday and Monday, the driest days with the 80s and more storms on deck next week. Avoiding the spotlight when working in theater takes real skill. Claudia Carson has managed to stay behind the curtain at Denver Center for the Performing Arts till last night when she said goodbye to the stage that she helped create for high school students. Here's Marshall Zellinger. I'm going to now welcome Claudia on stage and her team. When you are a theater stage manager, front and center on stage is not part of the script. I am so used to being backstage and being behind the curtain. But you cannot have a final curtain call from behind the curtain. I was feeling all the feelings and also really trying to be really present in the moment. Claudia Carson, a stage manager, teacher, and program manager of the Bobby G High School Musical Theater Awards, is retiring. She has led the Bobby G's since they started a decade ago. I've been at the Denver Center for um, really over 20 years, and it's time to go out when I'm still feeling I'm at the top of my game and not starting to go down. That sports analogy is fitting because the Bobby G's filled a void to honor high school theater students similar to high school athletes. Theater students need that recognition. They need to have a night where they get, they are celebrated and they feel like they're special. That does not mean Claudia should not feel special herself. I had no idea. We have renamed the Stage Management Award 
Of the 16 awards handed out at the Bobby G's, the one for stage manager has Claudia's name written all over it. I, I just burst into tears. Even when it was her time to shine on stage, it was her cast, the students, that she gave all the credit. It's my passion. It's my heart. Yeah, they are gracious and they are kind. And they are our future. And I will miss that. Let's give some kudos to some of her students there. That backflip you saw was from last night's awards from the musical Newsies performed by Central High School in Grand Junction. The winner of overall production was Lakewood High School's performance of Something Rotten. And Kyle, here's Something Rotten. I did a story on these awards last year, and I went to Lakewood and got video of their performance ahead of the awards, but this is the year they won <laughs> when I didn't do that. Not last year. Oh, that's so cool. She is so sweet. Music and theater teachers change lives. I'm biased. My mom was one, but they do. Thank you, Marshall. You know how each Friday we always ask, what's your good news? This week, students in Jefferson County are highlighting the good in each other. Melina was kind. A year-long project dedicated to kindness. Next. Each Friday, we celebrate your good news. Students from Schaefer Elementary in Littleton invited us to their field day for a lesson on kindness. <laughs> Today we're doing um, field day and we do a bunch of fun races and we get a few ribbons. I'm Augie Anderson, I'm nine years old and I'm in fourth grade. I think it is to bring us together and to just have a little bit more fun. Hi, my name is Darcy Jones, I'm in fourth grade and I'm 10 years old. I just love it how it inspires us to work together. So the kind of chain is where you write down little notes on little strips of paper. Great leadership and creativity, Connor. My name is Brayden Whitaker and I'm 10 years old and I'm in fourth grade. Melina was kind. So we made a bunch of kindness chain and wrote kind notes about our classmates in them and each grade dressed up in a certain color and we are gonna make a heart inside all of those chains. Look at this, there are over a thousand kind acts that you guys recorded on here and that doesn't even count for what you did record. We started all this to shout out the children like um, kids recognizing kids that students can recognize each other for doing things, that it doesn't just have to be a teacher to recognize. Matthew was so nice to me. He helped me with my timeline. Um, I wrote a, like a lot. Somebody let me borrow their pencil sharpener, or uh, I can't remember my other one. Um, because I think it's a fun thing to do and it encourages yourself and others. We just wanted to show the kids how much kindness they had throughout the school year. And when we connected it all together, how big the chain was. Schaefer is like a very kind school. And um, since we got to do the kindness change, it makes us just see acts of kindness much more better. It's good stuff. Striking piece of your feedback next. Sue says, just want to say thank you for giving the migrants coming to Denver a face. I know what you're saying, Sue, but we should be clear. They don't need anybody to give them a face or a voice. They have a face for anybody who's willing to see, a voice for anybody who's willing to listen. We're just making sure that the people being talked about are here speaking as well. That's all. We'll see you next time.